What's up, Jags fans? Here we are on a special Wednesday night show. I mean, who would have thought we'd be here on a Wednesday night? Because we have huge news to talk about tonight. Massive news. Mega news, even. Um, It's Joey Sly's birthday, the kicker. So we had to do a live show for Joey Sly's birthday. Shout out to him. Happy birthday, Joey. Um, That's it. It's the end of the stream. Glad y'all are here. Appreciate y'all being here. Uh, you'll catch me next week. Obviously, just kidding. We have huge news about Josh Allen signing a mega extension. Uh, we we were talking on last night's show um, about the potential of drafting a guy like Jared Verse or one of these other guys, and like what happens if you franchise tag Josh Allen again for a second time and then let him walk. All those th conversations were had on our hour long show last night. Um, Tonight, it's all about Josh Allen signing the extension. And, I mean, I don't think anyone could be any more happier for him than me. Very excited. We're going to dive into the contract. We're going to talk about what it means for the team, what it allows them to do as they build the team, and uh, what we can kind of expect from him going forward now that he's signed this huge deal. Before we get into that, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button, hit the notification bell. Because although we do have regularly scheduled shows uh, Tuesday nights, sometimes Friday nights. Sometimes we do Wednesday night shows when good news comes out. So here we are talking about uh, Josh Allen. I'm glad you guys are here. It's a fan show. I try to hit as many comments as possible. So get into the chat. Tell me what your thoughts are. Um, are you surprised at the dollar amount? Uh, he's the third highest paid defensive player now in the NFL behind Chris Jones and Nick Bosa. Uh, is it Nick Bosa or Joey Bosa? Nick Bosa. And so it, uh, that's, that's big. I mean, we now have one of the highest paid players in the league on our team, which is good. Right. Um, I know it cleared up some cap room. Uh, I think about $12 million for this year for cap room. So what do you think the team should do with that extra cap room? Should they use it? Should they not use it? Uh, does this change what you think they should do in the draft or not? Um, uh, so let me know, get into the chat. Let me know. We always shout out the first person in the chat. First person in the chat, channel member, Nolly Full Cab. And again, we got three channel members in the chat right off the rip. Nolly Full Cab, Rico, and that dude, Evan. Rico says, hey, that dude, Evan, says, tonight we rejoice. Absolutely. I mean, what a night for Jags fans. Uh, when's the last time a player – I'm trying to think like the last time the Jags drafted a player and then signed him to a deal that made him one of the top players in the NFL. I was trying to think all day. I couldn't think of somebody – it's pretty rare that that happens. Um, you know, Fred Taylor got that second contract that, you know, that was all right. Um, you know, the, the, there are some players here and there. 
but nothing. Uh, Cam Robinson got a pretty big second contract, uh, but nothing compared to this. So, congrats, Josh Allen. Um, I don't know if you watched his press conference today. Um, he was very happy, very happy about it. So pretty excited about that. Isaiah Jones says, welcome back. Long time no see. Like I said, we did a show last night about possible trading scenarios. We went through every draft pick. We went through where the Jags would have to give up to move up to that pick in the first round or move down in the first round. Uh, what they would realistically have to give up, the players that would be there realistically at that pick. Good show, fun show. If you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. It's on VOD. All these videos are under the live section, so you can go check that out. Uh, Daquan Dollison says, we in here. Robert Adsert says, got that bag. I love that. Kevin says, Duval. Glad he got his money, and he seemed very humble about it. It's got to be a great feeling to get that type of contract as an NFL player. I mean, I know when we drafted Josh Allen, I was pretty excited when I saw the Raiders took Clellan Farrell that year before Josh Allen. And I was pretty puzzled by that pick by the Raiders. And that was one of the best things that ever happened to the Jags as a franchise. We're going to take a look at Josh Allen's stats here in a second. Uh, some of his grades, what he did well last year. And um, again, being a young guy, I mean, he's, you know, was he 26, going to be 27? I love it. I love it. It's awesome. Sea Breacher, channel member, says, let's go. I'm so happy for this guy. Rubicon Racer says, let's effing go, Duval. Volkfang says, fears eliminated. Would you still take a guy to rotate between uh, round two and three just so Josh and Trevon don't have to play 90% of the snaps like they did last year? So, I mean, the fear would be that if you waited any longer than that, then you end up um, with another late round DN like they did last year that didn't really get onto the field. So I see your point, but I just think that there's so many needs on this team. Maybe they go best available player and maybe they do that because there is still a need for that rotational guy. BT, another channel member. Man, we got all kind of channel members in here tonight. It says, great extension. Would have been nicer two months ago to tag Ridley, but onto the draft. I love it. It's got to be our mentality. On to the draft. I love it. Uh, Josh Moneybags Allen. Rajib says, uh, happy for Josh Allen. Uh, Jordan DeLugo reported that the cap hit this year was only $11 million, leaving us with the room for another move, potentially. So now maybe you see them get back into the talks with a guy like Brandon Ayuk or going out and getting a, a, a number one receiver um, to play alongside of Christian Kirk. Now, they are still paying Christian Kirk a lot of money. I mean, I was looking at these contracts here. Um, they haven't updated like the actual cap and what it will do. Like what's like what's They haven't updated everything on Spotrack. But they did update. This is look at all these ads. Come on, I, mean, I know it's a free service spot track, but come on. Uh, Josh Allen. Can we I mean, good look. I mean, there's there's five ads on this page. Uh, Josh Allen, number one with the highest contract, five years, 141 million, 88 guaranteed. And the best part about this, drafted. Finally, a guy that we drafted. Christian Kirk on the books, four years, 72 million, only 37 guaranteed. I know we restructured that uh, to give him a little bit more money at the front end so we can get out of that if we needed to. Cam Robinson, another guy that we drafted on the books for 33 million guaranteed. Brandon Sheriff, 30 million guaranteed. Eric Armstead, 28 million guaranteed. Evan Ingram, 24. Gabe Davis, 24. Trevon Walker, 37. Trevor Lawrence, 36. He's going to be way up here soon. Devon Hamilton, 20 million. Um, Zay Jones, 14. Ezra, 14. Savage, 12. So your top paid guys right now are Josh Allen, Christian Kirk, Cam Robinson, Brandon Sheriff, Eric Armstead. Those are your top five. One of those does not belong. Um, all right. Happy birthday to Joey Sly. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joey. We gave someone, eight, uh, someone else 88 million. <laughs> Kevin, would you still look for a DN early in the draft to keep everyone fresh? Yeah, I mean, we've had, I, I don't know, honestly. I think they'll take best available player. I really do. So if it's a DN, I mean, within reason, obviously. Callie Jag says, WTF, a Wednesday night show? Listen, there may be some talks of some more shows during the week. So you may need to be have that notification bell on, which I know you guys do. Happy day, everyone, says Jagger. Not 
Volkfang says Cam's deal was kind of big, but this is another level. Like if they could have kept Ramsey happy. True. Good point. It is nice to see this work out, right? We've just went through not, you know, Jalen Ramsey, Yannick Ngakwe, or these guys we couldn't get the deals done for. Um, and it's nice to see that we can actually get a guy signed. And I know they talked about this a lot on the local radio here today. Um, it's good for the locker room morale. You know, now if you're a locker room guy, you're you're not looking at the past of those last two guys I mentioned. You're not looking at a guy like Calvin Ridley who played well and then went somewhere else. Now you have evidence of a guy who worked hard, played well, and got a deal done with the Jags. And that's good for the franchise. Um, they had some questions about whether Josh Allen will work as hard now that he's gotten the bag. And if there's anyone who I think is least likely to mail it in, it's probably Josh Allen. I just think there's probably something a little bit like natural about not being as hungry once you've been paid. So hopefully it won't affect him. Um, hopefully you can stay healthy. All of those things. Kev88 says, great, he got paid. If we suck, at least we got the money. He, If we suck, at least he got the money he fought for. Nolly Full Cab says, yo, shout out Clellan Farrell, for real, for real. <laughs> Rubicon Racer, is it possible we can actually get Ayuk now and actually afford it? Yeah, like I said, I mean, that Kirk deal could come off the books, I think, like next year or the year after. So if you do get Ayuk and sign him, you could have him long term. Private Life 904 says, excited about the Josh Allen contract, well deserved. Would you consider trading our first round pick for T. Higgins? I don't want to trade our first round pick. I don't. You could definitely make an argument to bring in a guy like T. Higgins. I love even more the fact that T. Higgins has history with Trevor Lawrence. And I think that would be amazing. I just really want a young guy that could potentially be good and that we could get cheap for four years. We wouldn't be able to have T. Higgins cheap for four years. Like, look at Anton Harrison last year. We hit on him in the first round. We get him relatively cheap for the next three years. So we have a potential. I mean, he's a, he's a good right tackle. He could potentially be our left tackle that we don't have to pay. for. Uh, we have him, you know, we have we can pick up his option and things like that. So I like the idea of, because if you're going to win, especially with a contract like Trevor's coming up, um, if you're going to get a guy like Tyson Campbell on, on the books, uh, then you're going to have to save money some places. And I think first-round picks are how you do that. You get guys in cheap. Uh, if they can bring in a defensive back, if they can bring in a wide receiver that's cheap, um, then I, I, I'm i more in favor of maybe packaging some picks and moving up a few spots and guaranteeing getting a guy like um, Quinion Mitchell or Brian Thomas Jr. I, I think that's where I would go with it. But if you were to sit here and make a case to trade for T. Higgins with the first round pick, I don't know if I could debate you. I really don't. Jaggernaut says, does Josh signing diminish our drafting a D lineman? I think it, I don't think it does. And obviously you can tell by my answer, I'm not sure. Um, after thinking about it for like, you know, three seconds, I think that they still probably, I mean, they planned on having Josh Allen for at least two more years, even if they couldn't get a deal done. Like we talked about last night's show, you could tag him again. So you have your D line for the next two years, regardless of what happened with this contract. So I don't think that changed any of their draft strategy. I think you still got to find a rotational edge. You still have to find a defensive tackle that can come in and eventually replace Armstead. Although I think Armstead still got some good years ahead of him. Um, but I don't think it changes their draft strategy. Nick says, let's go. Let's trade Cam in a third for T and draft Mims. Volkfang says, the only person I'm trading a first four is Wiggs idea. Minnesota wants some more ammo and we end up with Jefferson. The problem with, with Jefferson, um, and maybe this isn't a problem. The potential issue is he's going to end up being the highest paid wide receiver in the league. So you're going to have Trevor, who's going to be a top three paid quarterback. You're going to have Josh Allen, who's a top three paid D end. Even though by next year, he won't be the third highest defensive player, but he still will be one of the highest paid defensive ends. 
and then you bring in Justin Jefferson, you got to sign him. Now you got the highest paid wide receiver. That's a lot of big names on the books. And now you're ending up like the Rams. And for a team that, and I get it, the Rams have a Super Bowl. But for a team that doesn't draft well, typically, you don't want to dump all your eggs in the free agent basket. Especially so top heavy like that. That would be the only potential issue. Obviously, if we had Higgins or Jefferson or Ayuk on this team, they would monumentally make this team better. And we would probably have a chance to be Super Bowl contenders next year, which could be the goal. But I feel like for sustained success, you're better off drafting a player with those picks. Again, just, just my thought. Brett Zimmerman, another channel member, says, Hey, Jags United, how would you feel about doing a draft collab episode? You have to hit me up. Um, I have a lot of collab episodes on the books coming up. Um, I have one with UCF Jaguar coming up. I have uh, two with my buddy Dalton. I have one with my buddy Mike. So you'll have to hit me up, and, and we'll have to find a day that works best for both of us. But you know me. I'm all about uh, talking to other Jags fans. Um, I encourage anybody that wants to create content to do it. I'll even give you tips. I'll, I, and not that I'm like some like czar, but I can just tell I've been doing it for a few years. I can tell you like faster ways to get results. Um, I, I encourage that. I'm not one of these competitive people that wants to drown out the competition. So, uh, yeah, sure. Hit me up on Twitter. We can figure something out. RM Skip, another channel member. Glad he got his let the, the performance match. So let's take a look. That's a good little segue there. Let's take a look here. Um, this was his this was his like season grades over the last few years. I know PFF means nothing. Um, I mean, because even this year he had a 62.8 grade and he set a franchise record for sacks. So let that be what it may. Uh, 2021 had a really good year um, with only eight sacks. So not really going to get too caught up in the grades. But um, one thing that kind of stood out to me, and I don't know if this really means anything, but if you look at like this is this season. Um, he had one, two, three, four games with three sacks. So that means 12 of his, I'm sorry, that was the wrong, I circled the wrong thing here. Yeah. So 12 of his 19, and this is including playoffs, came, or the, including playoffs, like we made the playoffs. 12 of his 19 came in four games. So, I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, he did have 90 pressures. Uh, the pressures were pretty consistent. He's always been a pressure guy. If you can look over the, the course of his uh, career, 90 last year, 77 in 2022, 50, 22, uh, 49. So, he's always been a pressure guy. Um, he did have his highest missed tackling percentage this year, uh, but he was in the backfield more. And 40 stops. So, good numbers there. BT says, Do we know what year Balky started making picks for the 49ers? Has he really never picked a wide receiver in round one? He hasn't. He's taken a lot of... Um, D, D lineman, uh, but never wide receiver. Brenneman, what's up, United? What's up, Brenneman? Today is a good day as a Jags fan. I think we should go wide receiver in the first. Do we have the money for a free agent signing with the Josh contract and future Trevor contract? Like I said, I mean, you could go that route. You'd have to go cheap other places, um, which they may do. But in the modern NFL, you can afford to go cheap in those places. Um, I'm, I'm with you, though. I kind of would like to see a receiver in the first round and then kind of save that money for some of these other guys who you could potentially sign down the road. Sorry for talking like a, a robot. Uh, G. Grant says, Zero chance Mitchell is a Jaguar. Good player, but he was like he was like up at least 10 years off the ball 9% of the time. Volkfang says, The only good players who you don't have to pay are ones you draft. That's why I think we need to keep our picks and nail them, which has been the issue, admittedly. G. Grant says, did Minnesota win a playoff game with Justin Jefferson? Let it go, man. 
Rajiv says, I'd almost flip your logic back and say a team who drafts poorly risks being a middling team with lots of draft misses. That's a lot of self-awareness for Trent Baalke, though. Yeah. I mean, Baalke being someone who can't draft is definitely hurting us. Like, does a great job bringing in free agents, I think. But, and in the first round, he does okay. But, man, two and on. And maybe we'll all be proven wrong. Maybe Brenton Strange and Tank Bigsby and Ventrell Miller and Antonio Johnson and Parker Washington will end up being good players. And maybe they'll end up contributing next year more than we think they will. And maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe we'll have to eat our words on that. But it's not trending that way. Timmy Devil says, Minnesota. Cold like Minnesota. Uh, go get Justin Jeffers. Jefferson, says Timmy Devil. Nick says, this D-line, if healthy, will be crazy. I could see Josh, Trevon, and Arik combining for 40 sacks alone. Yeah, this D-line is going to be stacked for sure. Uh, Volkfang says, I think Josh is the only second player to have at least four three-plus sack games in one season since, like, 1983. I like that, Volkfang. I like that stat. Rajib says, yeah, so maybe Trent doubles down on his strengths instead of pretending he can build a contender from good drafting. Well, I don't think any GM thinks that way. I don't think any GM would even admit they're bad drafters. So for this concept, we'd have to assume that Trent Baalke has the self-awareness to say, I'm not good at drafting. And I can't imagine any GM, much less Trent Baalke, who is pretty arrogant, if you ask me, to admit that. He probably thinks every pick he's made has been good. Rajib says, uh, yeah, uh, Nick says, trading for Justin Jefferson would give Minnesota to, am to ammo to move up to three. Get it done. How do you trade Justin Jefferson, though, if you're Minnesota? There's no way. There's no way you can trade Justin Jefferson. I mean, he's like all they have. He's like their guy. I can't see, even to go up and get, to what, to go up and get, Jaden Daniels to go up and get Drake May. Thomas Shortledge says, what's up, Jags United? How much do you think it'll cost to re-sign Tyson and Cisco? I like Tyson, but I feel like Cisco is a guy you can't let go. So the thing with Tyson Campbell is that he wasn't very productive last year. Now, obviously, it was because he was injured. But he wasn't very productive last year. So if he combines two unproductive years back to back, I don't know what that's going to look like. Now, it's not his fault. Again, if he gets injured, it's not his fault. But at the same time, availability is the best ability. So I don't really know what that Tyson Campbell contract's going to look like. Andre Sisko, who I like, good player is playing a position that has become devalued, unfortunately. It is a position where teams have gone, they go cheap on nowadays. And so I am not so uh, worried about those two contracts. I would love Tyson Campbell to have a great year this year. I would love to him to get back to his 2022 form. And I would love to have to pay him a lot of money. And I would love for him to be a good defensive back. But just where we're at now, where we're sitting we're kind of in flux right now just because we don't know what we're going to get out of them this year. So that's going to be the only issue with those two guys. Timmy Devil says, United, you have to say Minnesota like Joe Biden. <laughs> I can't do a very good Joe Biden impression. Joey Venieri says, can't miss on draft picks if you don't have any. <laughs> See, now we're, now we're logic, boys. Now we're flipping on some logic. Uh, this is what this is what I'm here for. You guys know me. I like I like my logic. BT channel member BT says nailing the draft is hard. Average NFL careers three years. Most players aren't elite. Honestly, I'm just rooting for luck more than skill in getting the draft right. Okay, so BT is going to bring a little bit of perspective in here. It is hard to draft correctly. I mean, we mentioned Clell and Farrell earlier in the in the show. It, it's, I mean, for every hit, there's a miss. You kind of want to hit in the first round. You kind of want to hit in the second round. I think, yeah, I know the average draft tenure is three years, but 
your first two picks in the draft need to be hits. They need to be hits. So you can miss on round six and seven. You can miss on round five. Hell, if you miss on round three, I would be okay. But you can't miss on rounds one and two. And if you do miss on round two, you better hit on three or four. And we see the teams that hit later in the rounds have sustained success. Teams like the uh, the Chiefs hit constantly. The Ravens hit constantly. Um, these teams that are always good are always hitting in the draft, even in the later rounds. Nick says, I think Minnesota could trade Justin Jefferson because they know if they don't keep him happy, he'll walk anyways. So So get compensation while you can. I mean, the whole city of Minnesota would just turn their back on the team if they traded him. You wouldn't have any fans in the stadium. If you rolled Drake May out there with the rest of that roster, there's no way um, O'Connell is even making it through another season. So I, I, I just don't see it happening. Maybe it will. I've been wrong before, but I just don't see that happening. Um, if the Vikings miss on quarterback, Justin Jefferson would want out. Yeah, but at least it's not you that forced him out. And I just feel like the franchise isn't going to be in a position where they want to do that and where they want to be held liable. Uh, again, you have the whole city, their favorite player is Justin Jefferson. There's a, there's there's people in the outside of Minnesota whose favorite player is Justin Jefferson. Uh, when you get a generational talent like Justin Jefferson, you don't typically see them preemptively traded. Jesus died for you, said repent. Yeah, you should repent. And you should, you know, if you're making some bad decisions in life, you should stop. I agree. Yeah, I mean, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. But at the end of the day, you want to make the best decisions for yourself. Volkvang says, wait for the 49ers to draft someone and then offer them some picks for them, like an NBA draft and trade. So the 49ers take somebody, you're like, hey, like we'll take him or something like that. Maybe. You don't see that happen too often, though, Volkvang. You don't. But at the end of the day, uh, I think that we're, it's good to see that a homegrown drafted player um, is getting an extension. McGovern says, y'all, Jefferson is not getting traded, and we are not trading for uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Y'all need to get real. It probably would take more than one first-round pick to get Justin Jefferson. It would probably take two first-round picks. So I'm kind of with McGovern here. I don't want to trade two first-round picks. Nick says, bold take. I think Judy may turn his career around in Cleveland. I don't know what's going on with that Cleveland offense. Defense is good. I know they can't keep a quarterback healthy. But again, just because you have talent doesn't mean that you can keep, they can stay healthy. So, um, Deshaun Watson, I, I don't, does anyone have any real faith in Deshaun Watson anymore? Definitely not the same Deshaun Watson that was in Houston. That's for sure. Rubicon Racer says, for us to get Justin Jefferson, he would have to be shaken, Ramsey, pissed. That's the only way you get to trade for a guy like that. Yeah, I agree. Ventrell Miller, going to be in the mix next camp, says Raw Jeeves. I think the Jags think he will be. He was a good player um, at Florida. He was a very good player at Florida. And obviously, that's college. The NFL is not college. But um, I think he definitely can be, especially for those rotational linebacker snaps. I know we play a lot of nickel, so you got a Luacon and you have uh, Devin Lloyd. You got Chad Muma in there. So he's, he's going to have to fight for the snaps, but I definitely think you can see situations. I think on the new special teams rule, he would be a, he'll be a very good player on special teams. Um, he'll have a role. I don't know how much defense he'll play, especially coming off of a serious injury. But I think we're all happy for, jo for Josh Allen. I think it's going to be great. Um, and I think, uh, it's good to see, like I said, uh, I think we all wanted this to happen. I know we wanted it to happen earlier, but it didn't. It's happening now. Uh, BT says United, what are your plans for shows next week around the draft? So many directions it could play out for us. 
So Tuesday night, I'm having my buddy Dalton on. He was on the show uh, at the beginning of the season. Good guy. X's nose guy. I love him. Um, then I'm probably going to do a show during the draft with Mike. Usually we do a Saturday show. And then we're going to do a recap show on that following Tuesday with uh, Dalton again. And then there might be a UCF Jaguar show in there somewhere. Um, I really want us to get our own wide receiver out of this draft. I like that. Volkfang says, I mean, just trade all your picks to the 49ers with the condition that they draft for you and then they send the players back to you. Outsource the GM duties. I love it. I love it. Outsource it, baby. Have someone else do it. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, that's going to end it for me tonight, boys. Nice, short, and sweet show tonight. Just wanted to pop in and talk a little bit of Jags with you tonight about Josh Allen. I appreciate you guys being here. Be looking around. I, I, I'm probably going to do some more of these little short shows throughout the week. The Tuesdays and Fridays will probably uh, be more long form like they always are. But we're going to keep these. Um, maybe we're going to pop in some shows just because it's it's draft season. And um, we got some good stuff uh, coming up for the franchise, hopefully. I mean, we saw today that we did. So be on the lookout. Make sure the notification bell is on. Tell a friend about the Jags channel that you love so much and that your favorite YouTuber that you love so much. Tell a friend. That could help. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Big shout out to all the channel members that were here. Volk Fang, BT, um, RM Skip, Brett Zimmerman, Nolly Full Cab. Uh, we had um, Sea Breacher, that dude Evan, Rico. We had all kind of people in here tonight. Appreciate that. All the other commenters, I appreciate you guys as well. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I will see you guys very, very soon. And until then, as always, go Jags.